I just want to take you with me into different places to drink coffee and to talk about stuff. So today let's talk about musician's life because I think I'm really an expert in it and specifically today you can ask me any questions and propose any topics but today I want to concentrate on being freelancer versus having a full-time job. So if you guys have any questions or points uh, on that topic, please let me know in the comments, in the chat. But I'm going to tell you my story and my point of view and you just see what works for you. Is there such a thing as a full-time musician, first of all, because, you know, when your son or daughter tells you, mom, I want to be a musician. A lot of people would answer, no way. You're not going to make a living with that. And this is such a different way of looking at things from my parents, for example, because my parents thought that being a musician, we thought, they thought classical musician, I have to specify that, of course, classical musician, was the most intelligent profession in the world. They dreamt and had a plan of my brother and myself becoming classical musicians because they thought it's the most intelligent profession ever. They're going to travel. They're going to be so worldly. They're going to be so uh, eloquent, beautiful, graceful, and intelligent. I'm, I kid you not, that was their plan. So thank you thousand times to them for dedicating the entire part of their life to make it happen because being a classical musician is not easy and being a parent of a classical musician is even more difficult because you have to dedicate so much time to it. Uh, my parents were bringing me to school that was an hour and 15 minutes away from my house every day so two and a half hours almost every day spending just on road on getting there not counting three, four, five, six, seven hours of practice, depending on the day and depending um, on the age I was, right? I don't think I practiced seven hours a day when I was a kid. But getting older, it became closer to nine hours if I needed to pre prepare for competition, nine or ten. But parents weren't there already, of course. Of course, so we're talking about kids. But even summer, guys, oh my gosh, I remember summer vacation and everyone is just playing outside and my friends getting together at my country house that we call Dacha and I'm practicing and my mom creating all kinds of games and all kinds of reward systems so I still keep at it. I remember her coming into my room and telling me, okay, just a little bit more and you'll get Sha. Sha was a piece of chocolate. <laughs> like a dog, I would get a little treat for practicing more and longer and uh, getting me little paper toys because toys are expensive but paper toys that you cut yourself are not that expensive so I used to love it, I used to have, you cut out a, a girl, right, a, a doll and then you cut out her dresses also and then you can change dresses so once you're done with your piece you put on a new dress and you do it again. So it's a different situation. It's a different dress. It's so interesting. I'm excited now. I'm into it. I'm practicing. Oh, guys, there are so many tricks. So many tricks. And um, that is a good outlook. That said, there are plenty, plenty of jobs to make it as a full-time musician. There are great orchestras around. Uh, you can be a music director at the church, at the theater. You can be um, a full-time teacher at the school. So there are plenty of jobs uh, for musicians to make a living. With that said, there are not nearly enough those kind of jobs for the number of musicians there is. And for the number of musicians every year being graduating from universities, colleges, high schools, and getting their diplomas. What about musicians who don't have diplomas, just um, <laughs> with the passion, you know, rock musicians or um, great natural singers. 
So there is nearly not enough full-time jobs for musicians. With that in mind, it's not for everyone, guys. I feel like being in Florida and being with my story of being a foreigner, um, needing to study a lot at first, with my first year here in the United States, you know, I'm coming from a canceled country, but when I came here to the United States 10 years ago, by the way, today or one of these days, my 10 years being here, so woohoo to me. And um, it's complicated. I'm happy that I'm here because of everything that's going on in the world right now, but it's complicated, of course, because I'm all by myself here, my whole family is back there. So um, with my situation, needing to study, um, being a foreigner, and also being in Florida. Florida is a big key component to it because this is very much of a non-musical state. All right, in US, it's a non-musical state. The music infrastructure here is not that well set up as in New York, for example, you know what I'm saying? So, I, deliberately chose first just by the way my life was taking me and presenting it itself to me but now deliberately i'm making a choice to be a freelancer and not because full-time jobs are not available to me i want to fulfill my destiny as a musician and as a human being in as many areas of music and art as many areas as i can and being a freelancer gives me that opportunity. For example, if I would have a full-time job, would I be ever able to talk to you like this, guys? And you know that it's far from music, me talking to you like this, but it's all connected. It's having a community. It's not being lonely. It's not uh, being uninspired. We need to do things that go out of our realm and our everyday experience just to be inspired. Uh, for the next thing, right? For the next performance. So after this stream, I will be so happy to play violin again. You know what I mean? This is giving me a chance to internalize and analyze my life and my path and my choices. And since we're talking about music, it's very much connected to my profession and very much connected to my art. Besides that, I'm writing a book. I already published two books, a book of poetry and uh, fiction. The third book is almost over. I'm going to talk to you about it for sure in latest streams. Tune back for the new book. <laughs> um, teaching. I became a teacher in the past years, maybe past five, seven years more so. And I love it. I'm a private teacher. I go to my students, so they come to me. And I help them in the best way I can. I'm very encouraging, very supportive. I'm believing in music as a kind environment that makes people kind and better and not in the strict professional environment that kids are scared of and you know traumatized for life for. So <clears throat> and then performing of course huge part of my life is performing and I can choose my performances and I can still perform because for example if I commit full time as a teacher at the school I'm sure there is always, always an expectation that you will have time in the evening to perform anyway, right? You teach in the morning. But guys, imagine teaching for eight hours and then what? You're going to go home, change, and go out to perform? Like, when are you going to practice? When are you going to get inspiration to even put on a concert? And it sounds ideal to do everything, but there is only that much energy one can harbor and, and share, right? Performer is a ball of energy that he's sharing, right? That's why people who are um, artists, they really have this courage and this energy and this drive to go on stage, to go online, to do things out of ordinary and maybe sometimes being embarrassed by it, sometimes being very nervous and nerves stage fright is very real to me as well 
but we make this choice and we do it and we go on stream and we we have this performance high performance rush it gives us something so i'm making this content conscious choice to be a freelancer maybe i'm sacrificing in money <laughs> maybe i'm sacrificing insecurity not maybe 100 percent so because i don't know when is my next check coming and if it's even for sure that it's coming next month because any at any moment the student can move to another state at any moment uh, the place i used to perform can close down or have a pandemic and everything is shut down and you don't have any performances scheduled so it's very very uncertain but i'm choosing happiness i'm choosing fulfillment in more areas than one and i know that with my set of skills i need to do everything uh, to be happy because when it all comes together it makes me me all those parts of me and it's very important for me to try to fulfill as much of my abilities, talents, and desires as I can. And then, as a freelancer, if you make this choice, happiness and fulfillment and true calling over stability and security, then you also have to constantly be in this search mode. I know it about myself. I'm a lot of times not happy because I'm look, I'm thinking, what else can I do? What else can I do? But at the same time, it's wonderful because I'm never stagnant. I can always, when I'm tired, I can always switch to something else, from writing to singing, from singing to going to church and playing, from going to church and playing, going to uh, streaming in Meissner Park. You know what I mean? So I'm always inspired, always on the go, and. In this constant search which makes me a thinking and feeling human being I'm never just complacent I'm always searching and I think this searching this word is very important for an artist being in search and looking forward to the next thing and generating something all the time is very important for creative mind so goodbye billions hello diversity and fulfillment well that's my pointers for my today's topic that's what i've been thinking on too because uh some of my friends and especially some of my family members you know older family members who has the experience been pushing very hard for me to get a full-time job and i've been pushing very hard back to keep my freedom and my um, artistic lifestyle of drinking coffee in my school park. But guys, it's your choice, right? And I say money is the wrong, definitely a wrong goal. And if you guide it by money, then everything beneath it is gonna crumble. We need to be guided by something bigger. Either happiness or passion or drive. I don't know, maybe you're just very, very passionate about being an incredible lawyer and then who cares about money, right? It's a, <laughs> I'm just giving that example because it's very money-making profession, right? But if you're really passionate about it, then it's gonna fall into places for you. Now, if you're becoming a lawyer just to make money and you don't like it, you're gonna hate it so much and you know, all, all those millions won't matter much because you won't have time to spend it in. And... Well, that's my thoughts for today. And uh, there is such a thing as when you are a freelancer, you still have to, it's, it doesn't mean that you're going to be complacent as a freelancer. No, you're going you're gonna to grind, you're going to work, you're going to work. 
you're just gonna constantly look for work, you know, and then you have an opportunity to choose the work that you like. Um, my friend told me have a baseline that is there no matter what, some kind of base income that you have that pays your rent. At least rent and insurance are covered. You know what I mean? So you covered on this front. You have security of a ceiling and roof and a bed to sleep in, right? Have this covered. Now above that, you already can choose what to do. And if you're young, especially, I mean, come yeah. on, guys. When, if not now, right? So if you, I would say, uh, yeah. anywhere under fifty, I guess you still can take chances and try try something that you're passionate about. Don't quit your job immediately. Maybe go for a lower base pay maybe that gives you a bit more time but try your try your passion while you still have an energy because when if not now right <clears throat> and then uh it sounds easy for me to give an advice on that because i'm i don't live in poverty i live in boca raton and i live uh, close to boca raton okay <laughs> i don't want to give you my exact address i live almost in boca raton i live in America, I, you know, it's easy for me to give an advice uh, to pursue a passion and don't get a secure job uh, as a full-time job, uh, as a musician, try being a freelancer and explore. <clears throat> but guys, I moved to United States with $300. I think my parents, you know, helped me to pack my bags and I think I needed to cover my books. So first of all, I got full scholarship. So first of all, not coming from any wealthy financial situation here, okay? Coming from a canceled country, converting currency over there to dollars, literally devalued by, um, I don't know, 70%, 80%. So people over there make about $300 a month. So for me to bring $300 with me was already a month's worth savings. So I got a full scholarship, a full ride. Uh, I didn't need to worry about roof. I had I was provided an accommodation at the university I was going to. Uh, check out my next video about the university I went to, to get the scholarship too, if you want to. And follow my footsteps. But anyways, uh, that's why I was able to do it. I was able to buy a ticket for the plane and it's very expensive. So all what was left, two, three hundred dollars. That's all I was given for the entire freaking year. I came to America with three hundred dollars that I could spend throughout the entire year. August to May student year so I can give this advice because I went through living extremely frugal and I still do and I still pursue my passions so I feel like I am in the position to give you an advice guys and I remember flying and I I think I'm somewhat somewhat making it here at least I'm able to pay my rent <laughs> you know what I mean uh, being all by myself no help whatsoever um, of course I have my friends and of course I have a different situation now than years later but at first everything just fell on my shoulders even supporting my family as much as I could never asked for anything always bringing some money home instead and um, just living frugally and working hard but still being a freelancer so I think you guys it's your choice but if you're really passionate about something you have to try it you have to try it and I will never forget how I was flying here on the flight here and I was thinking, oh my gosh, I don't have a pillow. What am I going to sleep on? You know, people 
you know, you have an accommodation, but you're not giving a pillow or a blanket, you're not giving anything, you have just a mattress, a very, very small. I was sharing a room with a, another person, so two people in a small room, you know, like dorms with uh, that looks like apartments, not, not that kind, very small room, two people. So I only had a bed and a table and a chair. Like a little desk and a chair that's all i didn't have uh, anything else i didn't have a fridge lamp nothing so no pillow no blanket no lamp nothing i met wonderful people along the way who helped me with all of that but gosh wasn't i worried about my pillow on that plane and remember before i don't know now probably not anymore after the pandemic and all the you know shortages we're experiencing i don't think they give those pillows anymore but they used to guys on international flights they used to give you pillows to sleep on little pillows so i'm very ashamed to admit i might have taken that pillow with me and guys listen to this for the next two years i slept on that little pillow that was like a reminder to me what i came from and just staying humble and not 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 in a way that you know i have to get from this somewhere else skyrocket no but it was just a way for me to remind myself where i came from and that i don't need much in life that all i need is music happiness good people around me laughter twitch but i don't need much material things so two years i slept on this little little pillow that actually you know like it's it's, it's not even the size of your head, it's like literally very small. It was fine, it was fine, guys. I'm so proud of it. I like telling this story. See, even sharing it on Twitch. I'm just saying, all of us go through some hard events in life, and moving to another country all by yourself across the planet is a freaking hard event uh but i'm very happy i am here now i don't talk politics and i don't talk i'm not i'm not gonna discuss what's going on there right now i'm just happy i'm here so choosing to be a freelancer constantly searching for new opportunities and not being lazy. You can't be lazy if you're a freelancer. You just can't. You have to, if you don't know, if you don't see opportunities and jobs don't present to you themselves, you have to make them. Like during pandemic, Everything is closed, right? I'm a musician. Everything is closed. We don't even come outside to see each other, right? I cannot stay without a job. I cannot do anything. I cannot not do anything. That's what I'm saying. I'm starting to write. My dad used to tell me all the time, just write. Write your experience down. You don't know what's going to come out of it. Just write it down. Any hard event in your life, you just write it down. Any fun event in your life, but specifically travel, travel, troubles and um, sad times, just write it down. So I was writing like mad. I started writing the story that's been with me for the past 15 years, maybe. It was just like a dream. I kept dreaming it. I kept dreaming that story. I lived in another world. It's, very weird how this story came to me and then I started writing it down and then it was hard because I don't know how to write fiction you know it's very hard how to describe fights it's fantasy okay so it's fantasy it's very hard to describe fights and love scenes and like oh how do I do it and where's uh, he and she and I kept saying that they looked at each other like looking was my favorite um, <clears throat> Where I kept saying he looked at her, she looked at him. Like I was trying to <laughs> change it somehow, uh, winked at each other or uh, gave them a side eye. You know, you have to come up with a lot of different adjectives and different words for the same 
action because they kept looking at each other. My characters obviously couldn't take their eyes off, off each other. I was writing like crazy. I was writing for maybe six, seven hours a day. We didn't work, right? We were staying home. And my friend actually was working. He is a he used to be a music director at the church. So he was doing their live streams for the masses. He was uh, putting them online so people couldn't go to church and church came to them online. He was start he recorded masses, he was putting them online, he was working on that. So I remember him coming home in the evening and I'm just writing since morning till evening like crazy. I bought a I bought a desk, like a very cheap desk at Walmart, maybe $40, just a table <laughs> to write because we didn't have a table to, to write comfortably. Everything was either too low or too, too tall. Um, I bought um, special gloves that helped with arthritis because my hands starting to hurt. So I just was, for three or four months, was obsessed. I still can't finish the book because I, I'm editing it, guys. Once you wrote it, the, this is happiness. But after after writing it down, uh, I think already two years passed, or a year or two years passed, with me just editing it. I had to take a break from it, and I came back to it, and it's slowly editing. I don't like anything I wrote, but soon, soon. I'm very close. I'm on chapter 14 now. It's 17 chapters, so very soon. Three more chapters, and it's going to come out. It's going to come out in Russian first. But I'm translating it quickly. I'm sure it's not going to be quickly, but I'm trying quickly. Keep an eye on it. It's called um, Seer. Seer. In Russian, it's going to be called Vidulia. Vidulia. Anyway, so I created the job for myself out of nowhere. 